Hi, I'm Karan, and in this video we'll be talking about platforms. So, imagine what our life would be if we had no lungs, no uh, stomach. Well, we would basically have to live our life like flatworm does. What they do is basically they they have they do not have stomach nor they do lungs. Okay, so they have to be rather thin or flat in order to get oxygen and food for their survival. So we either have to be flat or thin to get oxygen and food for our survival if we don't have stomach or lungs. So let's go ahead and talk about uh, flat worms and three different types of flat worms in this video. So let's move on to the video. Before we talk about any of any types of flatworms, I want you guys to know that most flatworms, flatworms, uh, are classified together as a member of Lo Lohotrozoa. Now, these animals have feeding stru a structure that is made up of hollow tentacles, which is known as lophophore. Now, lophophore is basically a distinct free-swimming uh, uh Silated larva, which is also known as trophophore. Okay, now loaf. You might be getting confused in the term lophotrophoa, trochozoa. Okay, and it's the name. Name. This name is basically derived or taken from this two. Anatomical features that flatworm contains. So the structure would be okay. We will be talking about in planarians. So let's go ahead and understand the first type of flatworm. Now flatworms, and overall, out of three of those uh, different types of uh, flatworms that we we are going to talk about. Now, there's three similarities between the, the three flatworms that we'll talk about. So let me go ahead and list all three similarities. And whenever we go through each and every different type of, three different type of flatworm, there's a difference in themselves, which you'll we'll talk when we talk, start talking about the three different types of flatworm. So here, we'll be talking about three similarities of flatworm that they have. Is first that they have solid body. So even if you talk about any type of flatworm, out of these three that we'll talk about, they all have solid body no matter what. Then they, what happens is that they, abs they have absence of uh, gut. They do not have gut in themselves. And because they don't have lungs uh, and stomach, there's no, you can predict that there is no circulatory, whoops, circulatory, system. So let's go ahead and move on to the first uh, the first type of flatworm. Okay, so here we'll be talking about three different types of flatworms. Now they're all different because they have they have their own unique set of characteristics. So the first the first one that we'll talk about the flatworm is non-parasitic. The other two are parasitic. Now, let me go ahead and name all three of those and then let's talk, discuss about each of them in detail. So, the first one that we'll talk about that is non-parasitic is planarians. The second and third one are parasitic. The, the second one is flute. The third one is tape one. Okay, so both of these are parasitic parasites and this one is non parasite okay so this one doesn't harm anyone while well, this two can okay and in the flukes when we talk about flukes we'll also look at its life cycle okay and each for each of them I'll give you a visual a uh, hot demonstration and talk about each set of characteristics that they have. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the first uh, flatworm. So let's go ahead and talk about 
uh, the first type of platform, which is planetarians. The first point you already know is that they are non-parasitic, which means that they cannot harm each other. The second one is that it has so, uh, solid. Uh, it is free leaving. They are non -paras This this uh, type of fl flatworms are non-parasitic. Okay, non-parasitic. What they mean is that uh, they basically have a head with eye spots and simple brain build up of a cluster, uh, cluster of nerve tissue. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a video on the this particular type of platform, uh, flatworm, to actually understand the whole concept of planetarians, which are basically non-parasitic. So after what we talked about planetarians, and now that you have a whole idea of what planetarian is, uh, okay, so let's move on to flukes, which is the next second type of platform. So the second type of platform would be flukes. Okay, now this is basically parasitic. It's parasite. Uh, parasite. This kind of uh, flatworms are parasitic animals. Basically, what they do is basically feed on the body fluids of other animals. So, this can be dangerous to other animals. For them, this kind of animals are dangerous. So, this, uh, this, that makes this animals parasitic. Just like mosquito to us. They sit on us and suck the blood out from us. Because of that, mosquitoes are known to be parasitic animals. And uh, whenever you think of parasitic animals, mosquitoes come to mind uh, many in mind of many people. But now you have another type of animal, which are flukes. So if you are done with your thinking, don't always think of mosquitoes. Here we have flukes as well, which are also parasitic. Okay. Now the second one is mouth with a pharynx that opens into a gut cavity okay now if you're getting con confused on what the pharynx is this word basically is like a part of elementary canal that is immediately behind the mouth in the invertebrate and uh, invertebrates. Now, if you are still confused on what the pharynx is, it's simply a throat. Okay, it's simply a throat behind the mouth. Okay, it's immediately behind the mouth of invertebrate. Now, what's happening is that since we talked, we uh, we already mentioned that it's invertebrate. Now, it's not only invertebrate. Invertebrate. These animals can also be vertebrates. Now, what do I mean by this? Invertebrates animal are animals that do not have backbone, while vertebrate animals are animals that do contain backbone. So, this uh, flukes as a flatworm category can also have black backbone as a part of their internal uh, internal structure, and they uh, they might not have backbone as their internal structure as well okay so they basically have some kind of lifestyle that we can predict what's going to happen next and this type of animal flukes can uh, basically spread make many people suffer from lots and lots of diseases and because of that scientists have made up a life cycle that this kind of flatworm have life cycle now it's not because 
that they can they harm other people it's only because they live this certain type of lifestyle that they can be categorized or put into a category or affiliates which is a group into something that can be we can predict of what's going on like human being from small to big we can all predict what's when he's going to grow big in few years or not okay so here flukes are basically a flat worm that have a uh, they have a life cycle. So let's go ahead and take a look at the life cycle of uh, flukes. So as this, di uh, this diagram shows that the life cycle of one fluke, okay? So cystosoma, which basically, which can infect humans and cause a serious disease known as cystomasis. Now the disease basically has affected about tw 200 million people in areas such as Africa and Southeast Asia. So the disease is contracted by waddling or, uh, in or drinking fresh water com contaminated uh, with fluke, uh, fluke larvas like this girl over here who is picking up the, fl uh, the whatever she's picking up in the water. The fluke, what happens is this people, this people die often because the fluke larva has been located in the, the water and they have no, they are not aware of it. Now, since they are not aware of it, they they get the this larva, the fluke larvas can kill them. Okay, and they basically can get serious disease, which is known as cystomyosis. And symptoms of this disease can include one set of fever and muscle pain within one or two months of infection. Okay, now this this uh, disease. It's not that it's harmful disease that once you get it, you uh, you don't you cannot remove it. It can be also treated by antiparasitic medicines. Okay, so this is basically uh, the life cycle of parasitic flus, uh, flukes. So what happens is that first it's an, an egg is being passed on to human feces back into local waters. Now basically the snail after hatching from egg right here after uh, the snail is being hatched from egg in the water right here the young flutes infects the intermediate host in an aqu aquatic snails inside the snails right here the flukes develop a, a tadpole like larva okay so now the human if uh, the human steps in they they uh, with the bare skin right here since she has folded the plants up since this this all skin which is bare they can uh, immediately harm that area and then well, the flu uh, spreads diseases and it's a serious disease like I told you and then it ha uh, it converts itself into when it grows up after time it, it's known as adult flake now in adult flake the larva eventually settles in human inst in, uh, intestine where it matures into adult so this whole thing is the life cycle of so parasitic come across to the third category of the flatworm which is the tapeworm okay now like i said before that the next two will be parasitic this is a parasitic animal as well so the important point is that they are parasit they are parasites animal they're parasitic now what it means that is that they live that they live in vertebrate guts so live in vertebrates great good this is g okay now they like we said they all have heads but this particular type of flat one which is the tape one had small head with hooks with hooks or suckers used to attach to the host okay now like we said in the similarities they all lack of go uh, guts so they have no guts so to to actually take a look at the Tape form. Let's go ahead and take a uh, take a visual example and let talk about talk more on tape form. So let's go ahead and on to the so video. This is the tape form. Now I unfortunately couldn't find the good picture of a tape form, but you can always Google the images of a tape form. And this is taken from Wikipedia. 
So, like we said, this tapeworm. Now, more th information about this tapeworm is that the instead of like humans, which we swallow food, what they do is this animal can absorb nutrients from the digested food in which they live. Now, in the tapeworm, in the adult version of it, the tapeworm is basically made uh, made uh, made up of segments containing both male and female sexual organs. So, when these segments fill with fertilized egg, they basically break off and are excreted with the host feces. Now many tape, uh, tapeworm, not saying all of them, but many of them have complex life cycles. Now we just talk about life cycle, but it's completely different than those life cycle because we are mentioning about tapeworm's life cycle. Okay, and it has multiple holes because most, um, many of them have basically complex life cycle. So, the life cycle of a dog tapeworm begins when an egg is passed to dog species. A flea eats the egg and the egg develops into larva within the flea's body. The tapeworm injects another dog uh, when it accidentally eats the infected flea while licking its uh, fur. So, what the tapeworm does is basically develops into an adult within the dog's intestine and the cycle begins again so this is this is one of many uh, life cycles the complex life cycles that I've just mentioned you so this and again this is not just all of the tapeworm this is just one species of the uh, of the tapeworm and here I just talked about a species of a uh, tapeworm which is the dog uh, dog tapeworm okay